Now, later this morning, statistics on the number of forced marriages in the UK are going to be released. And despite becoming illegal in 2014, it's still an ongoing issue for thousands of Brits. Many subjected then to modern slavery, rape and violence within a relationship. Well, uh, Tirta Gupta is a barrister and expert in forced marriage and joins us now in the studio alongside Sonny Angel, who survived forced marriage. Uh, good to see you both this morning. Sonny, can I start with you? Tell us, tell us your story. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, well, I was married in 1999, so it was quite a long time ago now, um, you know, more than 20 years ago. So there wasn't a law then for forced marriage as it is now. So I basically share my story. So to give other people awareness, when I was married, um, the guy I was married to, he actually had some uh, mental disabilities. He wasn't actually aware of what was actually happening to him. So he was more vulnerable than I was at the time. So I actually felt quite sorry for him. His mum would actually force him to rape me which was really, really wrong. I mean, it, sometimes when we think of forced marriage, we always think about the girls being forced. We don't necessarily think about the boys being forced into marriage. So it's, it's quite a wider, you know, wider area that needs more awareness about forced marriage and arranged marriage. And I think we need some more light on it because a lot of people with disabilities or learning disabilities get forced into it, either to be used to have more, you know, more children, grandchildren, or to be used as passports for people to come into the country. So how were you forced into this situation? And this is a situation you managed to escape from. How did that happen? Well, uh, luckily my parents, um, you know, they were actually quite caring and they brought me back home. Um, unfortunately, that's not the same case for everybody. They don't get to be brought back home uh, to their parents. Um, I, I actually had a bad situation before uh, I was into the forced marriage. Uh, I had a stalker and uh, I was labelled as, you know, a problem that needed to be fixed. And, and the mentality of the Asian community is that if you're a problem to the family, let's just get you married off uh, as a quick fix. But a lot of mentalities are changing, but sadly for many, it's just get them married off, you know, let them be someone else's problem, which which is not the answer. It's No, it, it, it isn't the answer. Teacher, I mean, what are we expecting these figures to show when they come out at half nine this morning? I mean, th there should have been, since this was made illegal, there should have been a significant drop in forced marriages, surely. Well, it's all about um, availability for people to be able to uh, access resources, to be able to talk to the forced marriage unit. But I'm ex expecting the statistics to go down because of the pandemic. In other words, less weddings, less travel. But yes, this is a problem that's been going on for many, many years. Uh, it's a matter of brave people like Sonny being able to go out in the outreach programmes and talk to people and say, this is wrong. Something needs to be done about this. Who's at risk of this happening? And what kind of things can you do to protect yourself, your family, from ending up in the same situation as we've just heard? Well, there? Sonny's being very fair because she's saying it's not just women, it's men as well. For every marriage... Mm heterosexual marriage, you're going to have a man marrying a woman. And if one's being forced into marriage, maybe the other one doesn't want to be marrying somebody who's being forced into marriage. In other words, they're being mar uh, married in a forceful way as well. They're not consenting uh, really at all into that situation. And she's touched on something else, which is this, that somebody may lack mental capacity to be married. In other words, they can't consent. They're being forced into marriage. To say... Um, uh, why is this still going on? Well, the, to ask that question is it's like asking why is theft, theft still happening? Why do we still have But, but is, it, it, is it a cultural thing? I mean, is, is there a culture that needs to be overcome here, which is why it's a slow process? I think you put your finger on it, absolutely. There's a, a familial culture, it's endemic, it's deep-rooted. What an example is going to give you? Romeo and Juliet. Mm. When Juliet first seen in Romeo and Juliet, she's being forced into marriage by her mother to somebody else. Uh, if you look at Pride and Prejudice, you've got marriage being forced all over the place. Yeah. It's something that's happened in the society in England back in the day and other societies, I'm afraid, it's still there. Yeah. So if someone's in that situation, what do they do now? Contact the forced marriage unit. They're all over it. Uh, the, the websites are there. If you 
just Google it, you will find help there. Talk to a social worker, talk to your teacher if you're that age. The, the problem is <clears throat> that for a lot of people, say it's, a lot of this is, for, is familial pressure, so what you may not want to do, as unhappy as you are with the situation, is you may not want to then criminalise your parents. Absolutely. Well, there's civil and there's crime, isn't there? That's the two types of law you have. Civil, you can go to court and get protected without actually getting your parents arrested mm. or into a criminal situation. But yes, the crime is, for, in, of, of getting somebody forced into marriage, seven years imprisonment. If it's linked up to anti-slavery, that's ten years imprisonment. Now, most young people don't really want to send their parents to prison. They just want to lead, lead a free life. Mm. And brave people like Sonny, coming forward, working in outreach programmes, that's the way to get the word out that this is wrong and you can get help. I was going to say, Sonny, what, what impact does it have when you go and talk to people about this, talk to young people, men and women, boys and girls? What sort of response do you get? Well, for a lot of people, they didn't know the difference between a forced marriage and arranged marriage. You know, obviously, an arranged marriage is something you have with consent. And with a forced marriage, there is no consent. So, like, if you don't have consent to the actual marriage, you're not having consent to what follows. Like, you know, like, the, what follows is having children. So if you're not consenting to the marriage, you're not consenting to a sexual relationship. So everything that follows is rape. So if you have children born from that marriage, they're going to be brought up in a toxic relationship. They're not going to see love so they're going to grow up thinking this is all normal so that's not a that's not a healthy healthy life for a child to have no no it isn't look sunny angel it, we re it's really good to talk to you thank you very much indeed and as, as tita gupta has been saying extremely brave what you do even even after all these years thank you tita thanks very much indeed well, for clarifying well, where we are thanks and those figures will come out uh, later and i'm sure they'll bring them to you here on gb news now after the break here on Breakfast, we're going to find out what you can do, what you can try to do about managing your own energy bills as it looks like they are going to...